Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can sketch the three graphs y equals cosec theta, y equals sec theta and y equals cot theta. Now you may remember the definitions for cosec, sec and cot theta. I've just put them down here just in case you've forgotten. Cosec theta, 1 over sine theta, sec theta, 1 over cos theta and cot theta, 1 over tan theta. So, how do we go about sketching, say, y equals cosec theta? Well, like all of these graphs, what you could do is draw up a table of values, say, from minus 360 to 360 degrees and just use your calculator. But that's not the point that I really want to put across here. I want to show you how you can sketch them based just purely on knowing the sine, cosine and tan graphs. So we'll start with this first one, y equals cosec theta. So if we know the sine graph, okay, we've got y equals sine theta, it goes between 1 and minus 1. Let's just mark that in on the axis here. We've got the 1 there and down below here, minus 1. And it crosses the axis, theta axis here, at minus 360, 180 naught, 180, 360 degrees. We should already know this graph, okay? Now when it comes to drawing cosec theta, knowing that cosec theta is 1 divided by sine theta, funny things are going to happen. Because we're going to be, for instance, dividing by 0. Quite often, look at naught 180, 360, and down here at minus 180, minus 360. And you should know that 1 divided by 0 is an undefined value. You get an error on your calculator. So what that means is we get an asymptote. Asymptotes at these key points where we're dividing by 0. And this is a point that's going to echo through all of these graphs. So it's well worth noting that. So if we were to draw those asymptotes in at these points, we can use these as guidelines. Now, if I was sketching this, I would start off, say, over here. And I would think of, say, at 90 degrees, we've got a value of 1. So for sine of 90, we're going to have 1 divided by 1. And 1 divided by 1 is 1. So the curve's going to touch this point here. And here's another key point. This is at negative 1. At 270 degrees, you've got negative 1. So if you were to do 1 divided by negative 1, that is 1 divided by the sine of 270, 1 divided by negative 1 is going to give negative 1. So the curve touches at this point. And the same argument is going to be had at the minus 90 degrees and the minus 270 degrees. Now let's have a look at what happens in between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. We see that between 0 and 90 degrees, sine is positive. In fact, it's positive all the way for between 0 and 180. But on this stretch here, we've got values close to zero. They're positive though. So when we get values close to zero, which are positive, small values, we're going to be doing 1 divided by a small value. And that's going to be tending towards a very large number. So our curve is going to tend towards the y-axis. So we get a curve coming down like this through the point here, touching the curve at 1. And the same argument applies on this stretch. We've got positive values, but they tend to 0 here as we get to 180. So when we come to doing 1 divided by these values, they're going to remain positive, but they're going to start to increase. Get bigger and bigger and approach this asymptote here. They're going to tend to infinity. And this curve is meant to be symmetrical because this part of the curve is symmetrical to this part. 
And exactly the same argument is going to be had over here then. Our curve is going to come down like this, touch at the 1, and go back up again. Now for values down here, we've got negative values. Now as we get closer to the minus 180 here, these values are negative but close to 0. 1 divided by any negative number close to 0 is going to give us a huge negative number. So this is going to be approaching minus infinity. So we come up through here. At minus 90 degrees we're doing 1 divided by minus 1 which is minus 1. And then the same argument that we had over here applies to this stretch. As we approach 0 but with negative numbers our values are going to get very negative, huge negative numbers. They're going to drop away now to minus infinity, tending towards minus infinity. And we can apply the same argument on this stretch here. Coming up through here, touching the curve there at minus 1 and dropping away. And when we go beyond 360 degrees, we're going to get our curve coming down through here and going off like this. okay. And at this side we're going to have our curve coming round like this and then coming in like so. So that's the graph of y equals cosec theta. Now we can do exactly the same when it comes to y equals sec theta. There's such a similarity. So you might like to have a go at this. Think about the graph of cos theta. Sec theta is 1 over cos theta. And remember that 1 divided by 0 is going to be undefined. So we're going to have similar asymptotes. They're going to be in a slightly different place though. So just pause the video, see if you can have a go at sketching that. OK, let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, I would want to put on the graph then of cos theta. So there's our graph, y equals cos theta. We'll mark it on, all right, y equals cos theta. Now, these key points here then where we divide by 0 are going to give us undefined values. So we're going to have asymptotes at those points. The graph of cos theta goes between minus 1 and 1, so that point there is going to be a 1, and this point is down here is going to be minus 1. So when we get to points like this one, we'll be doing 1 divided by minus 1, which is going to be minus 1, so the curve is going to touch at that point there. Same argument had over here. And for this point here, we've got 1 divided by 1. When you're putting 0 degrees in for cos of 0, you're going to get 1 over 1, which is 1. So you're going to have the curve touching there. Same applies at the 360, same applies at minus 360. And if we take this section here, between minus 90 and 90, the curve's positive. It approaches 0 at 90 degrees and at minus 90 degrees, but it's positive. And as it approaches 0, our values go upwards. They tend to infinity. So we're going to get our curve coming down like this, through here, touching at the 1, and back up again. Same is going to apply at this end here. Curve's going to come down like so, touch there and then carry on off. And the same at this end. Down here, touch at the 1, and then carry on off. And for these sections here between minus 270 and minus 90, and 90 to 270, similar argument as we had over here. Touches at minus 1, got negative values approaching 0 here and here, so 1 divided by a very small negative number is going to be a huge negative number, down like this, down here. 
and the same here. Coming up, touching at minus 1 and dropping away down. OK. Finally, we've got this graph then, y equals cot theta. You might like to have a go at this one. OK, so if you had a go, what did you do? Well, cot theta is based on the graph of tan theta. It's going to be 1 over tan theta. So if we're drawing the graph of tan theta, hopefully you've got a sketch something like that. Now the key points in this one are going to be when we are going to be dividing by zero. So we're going to have asymptotes on those points there. We've already got asymptotes for tan theta at 270, 90, minus 90 and minus 270. I'm not putting those in because it's going to cramp the diagram. So let's just see what happens. Let's take this section here, say. For this section, we're dividing by 0 when it comes to doing cot theta. 1 over tan of 0, 1 over 0, which is an undefined value. So if we just step slightly to the right, we're going to be dividing by positive values here, which are going to be very small, leading to then very big values up here. So the curve's going to come down like this. Now, as we approach the 90 degrees, we're dividing 1 divided by huge positive numbers. So what we're going to get is that this is going to come down and going to head towards 0. 1 divided by a huge positive number is going to tend to 0. Then we come on this stretch here. And the argument is reversed, only it's going to be in the negative sense. We're dividing by a huge negative number here, just on the other side of 90, which is going to result in a small negative number. But as we approach this value, the 180, we've got negative, very small values. So we're going to get 1 divided by a small negative value is going to lead to a huge negative value. So we're going to get a graph looking like that. And we can carry on this argument in each of these sections. So you should be able to generate this curve in all of these sections. Well I hope that's given you some idea then how to sketch the graphs then of cosec theta, sec theta and cot theta without having to resort to using your calculator. Just base them then on the graphs of sine theta, cos theta and tan theta.